I think it's fair to say that OpenAI's GPT-4 is basically the most successful, highest grossing LLM tool in existence today. Obviously, since they joined Microsoft, they've been an unstoppable force. And most of the drama around them basically has just been around where they get their data from and some of Sam Altman's choices as to how he runs OpenAI. And what's interesting is a lot has kind of happened this week. One of those things was that they've stopped kind of pretending like they weren't scraping the entire internet and they're just buying entire websites now. And one interesting way of saying that is that you've partnered with them. So one of the first services among now many, basically hundreds of startups and wrapper based startups that OpenAI has just completely replaced was Stack overflow because initially programmers when they had a question or a thought about hmm, like how would I do this without slamming my head against a desk for an hour or two they would go to Stack Overflow when I was in college it was kind of a meme that if you didn't know what you were doing you would just go to Stack Overflow and figure it out and copy and paste and hope that whatever you had there was good enough and what's interesting is OpenAI has finally just purchased this and it raises some interesting questions both with their partnership with Microsoft where Microsoft sees the future of their AI efforts with or without OpenAI and and kind of what the word partnership means either to Satya Nadella and Sam Altman when it comes to the partnership of, again, Microsoft and OpenAI. So I want to talk about why Stack Overflow isn't necessarily dead, but why effectively for its use cases it kind of is dead, what this means for programmers who use OpenAI, how this informs OpenAI's future direction, both with agents, programming, and just where they get their data in general. Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So Stack Overflow says in this tweet, we're thrilled to announce we're partnering with OpenAI to bring best in class technical knowledge and the world's most popular LLM models for AI development together. This is a groundbreaking partnership with OpenAI and it will drive our mission to empower the world to develop technology through collective knowledge. Now, knowing OpenAI, knowing Sam Altman, the throwing around the term collective knowledge is kind of a insidious way of putting that uh, OpenAI wants to have all of your data and they want to use it to make their own services to make money even better, which I can't really blame them, but that's kind of what they mean by that. The most interesting thing to this for me is that um, DeepSeek Coder and the Phi 2 and Phi 3 models have all been trained on internal data from Microsoft with decades of information building software. And for certain reasons, it makes sense why Microsoft maybe hasn't wanted to share this with OpenAI. It makes sense why there are certain silos in place between these teams. And this relationship is getting more and more rocky. In November of this past year, there was a really interesting kind of rocky period where it was unclear how well OpenAI and Microsoft were getting along. The decision behind uh, basically acquiring Stack Overflow is an interesting one because there are legal attributes of this, there are technological attributes of this, and then there's just the fact that a lot of these kind of faltering kind of forum-esque companies that used to be the way we queried information on the internet are becoming worth, not worthless but most of their value really is just in their raw parts and just the stuff stored in databases and on servers that can then be fed into something like before or just turned into a data set that they can sell and it's a really interesting direction for the internet itself. Now, what, I'll, what I will say is I think more of the interesting thing about this is as websites like this die, there's a question as to how progress in that data and progress in understanding kind of new languages, etc starts to go forward. For instance, the reason Stack Overflow is so valuable is because as languages improve, like Python 2 going to Python 3 and Rust becoming more prevalent, that's reflected in the data that these websites have. So for instance, a lot of the most useful questions are kind of in those intermediary kind of transitory times. And obviously what was a valid answer at one point for certain things in Python or certain things in C, as the tooling improves and as just the ecosystem develops over time, they change wildly and there's a question of you know will we be able to train gpt4 as well when new languages like typescript continue to evolve or when you know a 47th front-end framework for javascript ev emerges and we actually want to use that with and what's interesting is in certain cases the advent of ai might actually make these services slower and in certain cases hinder the further development of ai at least in these very specific niches because now people have no real reason to go to Stack Overflow and post. Inferring this as real life human feedback we found is getting harder and harder, especially when it seems like in many cases, synthetic data is more predictable 
in many cases respond in many cases actually turns into better performance more often than real life human feedback and the issue with real life human feedback at least in terms of programming and pros and some other things is that you actually need more humans who also know the context of this information to vet whether it's good or bad for instance for the longest time the reason why sometimes chat gbt would give you back a wrong programming answer is either it didn't really know what was right or it had enough training information that what it gave you, it just thought was right because that's all it had to go off. So whether or not you've used Stack Overflow or not, or you're old enough like me to be, to remember a time when Stack Overflow is one of the best resources to learn faster on the internet, I think there's some really interesting implications here. And for me, I think most of this really is kind of the funny outcome of, you know, GB of OpenAI probably approaching them and saying, hey, like we can either just scrape your entire website or if you let us partner with you and basically buy you out, we'll give you some money and be effectively doing the same thing anyway, except you'll get something out of it for the people who are still maintaining it, which is a pretty interesting outcome. That's actually in a lot of ways, a pretty positive one for Stack Overflow, but it'll be interesting to see kind of where this goes in the future, especially when people start to use uh, tools like Copilot more and you have to wonder what the real value of this long-term will be for OpenAI. There's also a question of why OpenAI has all of a sudden gotten so desperate to find more data, especially when there's really limited evidence, uh, both in research and both in the history of OpenAI's work, that more data will actually make things better. Some would argue that the pending release of models like Llama 3 400B and these fine tunes of that model that have million plus token context windows, some now even larger. We're making a video about that very soon. And the question is, you know, OpenAI might just be scrambling to make their product as good as possible, as fast as possible, because it's really quite likely that open source models without too much work might very soon be able to surpass the relative performance of GPT-4. And this is why Sam Altman has been on kind of a, a press tirade and has been on Capitol Hill this past week trying to lobby for regulation of GPUs. Because ironically, what's happening is as more people have GPUs and if people have open access to, G to GPUs and you can use your local GPU to actually do AI things with, it means you don't have to give Sam Altman money. And the other irony is that it's also, even if Microsoft completely detaches from OpenAI, it'll hurt their bottom line because ironically, the more GPUs NVIDIA sells, the lower the, the average price to rent an H100 is just as competition continues. And that's just how that scales. And what's really interesting is that this whole process might actually take Microsoft out uh, just if it, we keep going the way we're going. And granted, you know, by take Microsoft out, I just mean that a lot of the AI stuff they're doing will, will be woefully unprofitable, especially when you can just not use a Microsoft product and with a local situation or even with a, you know, not even a 4090, get really great results. Who's to say you even need it? So I'm curious, uh, are you sad to see Stack Overflow kind of go this way? Do you think Sam Altman uh, and OpenAI with ChatGPT4 and GPT4 Turbo are getting desperate, really hoping that they can make it better than Meta's offering as soon as possible? Do you think Microsoft made a mistake partnering with OpenAI? And are you worried that the government might actually start to regulate GPUs? We have a video on that coming out very soon. But, um, but yeah, so very interesting times. It'll be really interesting to see what happens here. I'm kind of sad to see Stack Overflow go this way. I mean, granted, I don't really use it very much anymore. Uh, a lot of the results there were usually just kind of crusty guys who wrote C++ in the 90s. But they did have good um, advice. And um, yeah, so... We'll see how that goes. But yeah, let us know in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something in this video and we'll see you in the next one.